talk to me about other beverages, alcohol and uh, fruit drinks, the, the benefits, the negatives. Uh, like I lean towards the negatives of any kind of drink that has calories to it, but I want to mm -hmm. hear your thoughts. Well, when it comes to um, drinks, you know, first I'll, I'll start with the, the most controversial one, right? It, which is typically alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, is it okay to have alcohol? How much? You know, I myself, like I do enjoy some alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, very different than how I would have approached it in my 20s, um, maybe even in my 30s. But, you know, if we're going out to eat or they're just, you know, on a certain night, let's say our, our date night, maybe even family night we might open a bottle, nice bottle of wine mm -hmm. and I'll enjoy one or two glasses and I'm good. Um, same thing with uh, whiskeys. Like I'm actually a big fan of bourbon and scotch. And so I'll have whiskey, but like, again, I'll have, you know, one or two fingers worth and that's it. So I think that, you know, I've transitioned from like, like many of us who've grown up, you know, I've transitioned from, hey, I'm going to use this as, as a means of, of binging and trying to, you know, make a situation more enjoyable. And now it's more like, hey, I'm, I'm actually doing it because I enjoy the taste of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and it goes back to that, that comfort, right? I just want to enjoy myself and have something that comforts me, but it doesn't have to be in excess. Um, and then we know that there are you know, it's been well documented in research, there are plenty of health benefits tied to consuming, again, a moderate or small amount of alcohol. Uh, but yet, I don't even do that, I would say on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm more of like a couple times a month, you know, there's there's no rhythm about it for me. Um, there may be a week where I decide I'm going to have, you know, alcohol on two occasions this week, but that not happen for the next six. Um, it's just more of a circumstantial thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but so yeah, alcohol is really not an issue. Um, I would say that what would be an issue for me, which is a bigger issue, is when people are consuming a lot of fruit drinks and things that are loaded with a ton of unnecessary sugars. Mm -hmm. uh, and that to me is probably the bigger issue. Um, but even if you wanted to tie that into the alcohol piece, I mean, mixed drinks and stuff. When I said I enjoy bourbon, it's like usually I have it by itself with, you know, a piece of ice and that's it. Um, same thing. You're not mixing anything with wine. Uh, so, you know, I try to stay away from anything that that would add um, an excessive amount of sugar into my body, um, excess, excessive amount of carbohydrates or refined carbohydrates. That's sort of where my mentality goes on on drinks. But that's why I typically keep it to water, coffee. And if I, if I do have anything that has like a sweet taste to it, it's typically something that is calorie free um, and usually comes with some other benefits. There's some certain supplements and things that I'll take and I'll mix into my water to make it tastier. Mm -hmm. um, but there's other things tied to that, but there's no, no added sugar. And so that's sort of where, where I try to try to go on this path. Got it. I had a guy who came to me and he was like 295 pounds. He said, Tom, I drink 28 beers a week. So do I have to cut out beer? I said, dude, we're not cutting out any beer. We're, we're going to, we're going to, we're not going to cut out beer. What we're going to do is we're going to minimize it. We're going from 28 to 14. You can't get a guy going from 28 to zero. But I also said this to him. If your calorie intake for the day is 2000, we can make anything work. If we want to throw in a beer. It's not a problem. We can make that work. But what we want is some of those other calories to be good quality, nourishing calories, we want to keep your sugar levels down, that kind of stuff. So we can make anything work. But somebody might look at you, uh, Mike, and say, but orange juice is good for you. What do you say to that person who does indulge in the, uh, you know, the occasional fruit drinks or, you know, a, a heavily sugared booster juice? What do you say to that person? Well, I think the first thing that I say is I ask a question. Who says it's good for you? Yeah. You know, who says that? You know, I, I think you always have to first begin with with why why do you have that belief? Mm -hmm. um, because you know, if you're thinking about it, and I understand people might be brought up with the thought like, oh, you should have orange juice, it's high in vitamin C. But you can get vitamin C from so many other sources, yep. so many other foods that you're consuming. Mm -hmm. Uh you can supplement in order to get more vitamin C. So to me, you know, using something that is 
filled with sugar in order to get a certain vitamin or a mineral, it, it doesn't match up. It doesn't match up. So I would say, hey, listen, if you, if you enjoy orange juice, if that's your thing, then sort of exactly what you recommended with regards to the client with the beer, like, let's just at least cut it down because, you know, we, we just don't need to, to add all this additional sugar into our body, which it's going to have difficulty processing. And, you know, we could go down the litany of other negative side effects and that's not to, to demonize sugar. I'm not a sugar demon, uh, but it's just to understand like, Hey, if your intention is to consume this because you want to get these vitamins, um, there's other ways to get them as well without as many negative consequences.